All right, so here we are, Because of Winn-Dixie, Chapter 3. I started in on Winn-Dixie right away, trying to clean him up. First, I gave him a bath. I used the garden hose and some baby shampoo. He stood still for it, but I could tell he didn't like it. He looked insulted the whole time. Why, like, he didn't show me his teeth or wag his tail once. After he was all washed and dried, I brushed him good and used my own hairbrush and worked real hard at all the knots and patches of fur stuck together. He didn't mind being brushed. He wiggled his back like it felt pretty good. So insulted means that he felt like, why am I getting a bath? I'm not that dirty. The whole time I was working on him, I was talking to him and he listened. I told him how we were alike. See, I said, you don't have a family and neither do I. I've got the preacher, of course, but I don't have a mama. I mean, I have one, but I don't know where she is. She left when I was three years old. I can't hardly remember her, and I bet you don't remember your mama much either. So we're almost like orphans. When Dixie looked straight at me when I said that to him, like he was feeling relieved to finally have somebody understand his situation. I nodded my head at him and went on talking. I don't even have any friends, because I had to leave them all behind when we moved here from Watley. Watley's up in North Florida. Have you ever been to North Florida? When Dixie looked down at the ground, like he was trying to remember if he had. You know what, I said. Ever since we moved here, I've been thinking about my mama extra, extra hard, more than I ever did when I was in Watley. When Dixie twist, twitched his ears and raised his eyebrows, I think the pe preacher thinks about my mama all the time, too. He's, in, he's still in love with her. I know that because I heard the ladies at church in Watley talking about him. They said he's hoping she'll come back soon, but he doesn't tell me that. He won't talk to me about her at all. I want to know more about her, but I'm afraid to ask the preacher. I'm afraid he'll get mad at me. When Dixie looked at me hard, like he was trying to say something. What? I said. He stared at me. You think I should make the preacher tell me about her? When Dixie looked at me so hard, he sneezed. I'll think about it, I said. When I was done working on him, when Dixie looked a whole lot better. He still had his bald spots, but the fur that he did have cleaned up nice. It was all shiny and soft. You could see his ribs, but I intended to feed him good, and that would take care of that. I couldn't do anything about his crooked yellow teeth because he got into a sneezing fit every time I started brushing them with my toothbrush, and I finally had to give up. But for the most part, he looked a whole lot better, and so I took him to the trailer and showed him to the preacher. Daddy, I said. Hmm, he you. said. He was working on a sermon and kind of muttering to himself. Daddy, I wanted to show you the new Winn-Dixie. The preacher put down his pencil and rubbed his nose, and finally he looked up. Well, he said, smiling real big at Winn-Dixie, well, now, don't you look handsome? Winn-Dixie smiled back at the preacher. He went over and put his head in the preacher's lap. He smells nice, too, said the preacher. He rubbed Winn-Dixie's head and looked into his eyes. Daddy, I said, real quick, before I lost all my nerve, I've been talking to Winn-Dixie. Is that right, the preacher said. He scratched Winn-Dixie's head. I've been talk to, talking to him, and he agreed with me, that since I'm ten years old, you should tell me ten things about my mama. Just ten things, that's all. The preacher stopped rubbing Winn-Dixie's head and held real steel. Still, I could see him thinking about pulling his head back into his shell. One thing for each year I've been alive, I told him. Please? Winn-Dixie looked up at the preacher and kind of gave him a nudge with his nose. The preacher sighed. He said to Winn-Dixie, I should have guessed you were going to be trouble. Then he looked at me. Come on, Opal, he said. Sit down, and I will tell you ten things about your mama.